Cool. Cool. <laughs> Hello and good morning. So this is Pilates with me, Helen, and we are going to do some standing work focusing on balance today. Um, and mobility, they're like the two key ones. Then I'd like us to revisit some classic strength poses um, as the session goes on and then we'll finish with a nice bit of relaxation um, because we're entering into crazy season because it's crazy town out there in November and December. Um, and um, it's like herding cats trying to get everyone in the right space at the right time, including you guys actually. Um, it's crazy town <laughs> all over. So let's focus on our stress management too. Okay, we start by some good breaths. And to remind ourselves, lateral thoracic breathing is really how we do it um, in Pilates. So that is breathing in through the nostrils and allowing for an expansion of the rib cage. So feel that inflation in your rib cage. But as you breathe away, um, we need to engage, tighten and lift all at the same time. So with that Pilates hat on, we're inhaling through the nostrils. Like feeling that expansion, rib ways, rib, ribs width ways, and then contract, pull it all and tighten it in. Um, so it's almost like, you know, those travel plastic bags, you shove your clothes in and then you suck the air out and then it compresses your clothes. That's you, that's your hydraulic amplifier mechanism all kicking off nicely. Okay, Patricia, what's wrong? I've adjusted, so open door when you're ready. Okay, so let's just start with a little bit of mobility, lovelies. So rise and fall through your feet. Think about um, the big toe, second toe to start with. And I want you to rise swiftly and slowly melt the feet down into the ground. And do this using support from your pole if you want to. Can we call it a bar? today we'll just call it a bar okay <laughs> it, you probably can't hear but my feet are going click 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 um, as I'm doing that lovely okay and as we're rising quickly and slowly settling I want you to think about it's almost like a, a spiral coming out of the arch around the front of the shin back of the knee around the outside of the thigh so when you squeeze when you come into position, I want you to think about that tightening of your buttocks and almost pushing your pelvis through. And that bit's really important. So we've got full engagement here. Okay, so now I want you to push your hips side to side and you do that by alternating feet, push the hips sideways and sideways. Now, same thing as you do this, I want you to push your hip as low out to the side as possible. And what you're going to get here is a bit of targeting on the front of your shin as well. So this is creating just some warmth in your lower limb, mobility around your ankles. You'll feel a stretch through the outside of your hips and the whole body is starting to get involved with this action. I'm gonna ditch the glasses because I'm sweating. Okay, lovely. Okay, good. Right, so let's think about shoulders. Bring feet together. Arches connect through feet. I've got my socks on to keep my feet warm for a minute. Okay, shoulders back and down. Let's just do a couple of shoulder rolls. Now, oh, that feels nice. As we do this, we think about what's going on between the shoulder blades. So we are squeezing the shoulder blades together. Lovely, let's reverse it. Now I find this way, it's not my favorite movement because I spent all my energy working on people to open up the front side of the body. Um, so when we're rolling, we're, we're reinforcing that flexed posture. So now we unroll again using your pole, squeeze your shoulder blades and settle. Okay, out to the side. So we're working on, doesn't that, there's no style. There's no style here. That's in, we're in this tiny studio and I, my, my tall body still. <laughs> 
you lose my hands in the shot. <sighs> Lovely. Okay, so then we go into the angle. We did this last week. So instead of side to side, it becomes forward slightly diagonal, back diagonal. So forward and back. You might experience clunking or not. And the idea here is, is really getting a lovely stretch out pectoral because later on we will be having a go at some press ups when I said classic moves. So think diagonal and really work with that stretch. Now, I, I love this combo of exercises because it really does, it, we, we called it like facilitated stretching. So we're using an outside force here to, to maximize the stretch. This is a really good thing for flushing toxins as well because this stretch in the armpit here is targeting the lymph nodes around um, the arm area. So you get a nice flush of fluid, toxins. Good stuff, well done. Now we practiced this last week. We're looking to hold the pole, like that, got it? So palm up. This is about wrist, motor skills, elbow, shoulder. We're gonna twist it up and then twist it back. Twist it up. Play with this, don't overthink it if you can help it, because as soon as we start thinking about what exactly we're doing, We'll forget. Twice, twice on my drive to work this morning, twice I said, anyway, what was I saying? <laughs> okay, now here's the change. Now we grab this bar, your palm is up, so you've got your hand cupped upwards, and we're gonna hold the bar. The bar is going to sit on the outside of your forearm, and then you're going to use the pole bar to just work on stretching your shoulder and just maybe taking the range slightly further, assisting stretch and assisting that range of movement. Go with it, you might find some niggles or some sweet spots, just have a play. Go, oh, that felt nice. And then release, well done, good job. Other side, right, so we're just working on mobility. So this in itself, because you're pinching with thumb and finger, we're working on the, the fatty part of your hand. Um, we're working on wrist mobility, elbow and shoulder. So it's all nice stuff. Lovely. And then when you're ready, you hold. So again, the bar sits on the outside of the elbow joint and that's when we start to have a little play. You may have noticed one side might feel slightly different than the other. <sighs> Lovely. So I'd like to put time into this. I think this is important to practice. Okay, so from here, we're now holding the, the bar. <clears throat> we're taking it up as far as we can and then back again. A lovely little tip here is if you pull so you actively pull the bar. You might feel this helps with your range of movement. And at some point, you might be able to go further back. I couldn't have done this six months ago, four months ago, two months ago even. And what you can do is pull it right the way up and over if you want to. Now it's okay if you've got a bit of a cheat on and you're bending one elbow to do that. I would rather you feel the sensation than not do it at all, if that makes sense. So go with it. And the tip, the, the, the real knack to this is consistently, continually pull the, your hands away because that will really help you get up and over. Lovely. That's good work. I'm watching you all nice visually. That looks really lush. Well done. So you might be going, oh, hello. Oh, lovely. Okay, so let's ditch the, the pole for a second. Let's bring the roller into play. <coughs> so using rollers are just such a, a nice, such a nice bit of kit um, to get you going. 
Um, sometimes I'm moving and I don't even realize I'm doing it. So <laughs> I've used the roller and I'm creating some circles and pressing downwards at the same time. Switching direction. So again, I'm, I'm challenging my shoulder. I'm really looking to get it nice and warm and lubricated because it's complex, the shoulder joint. There's so much stuff. When people have shoulder injuries, it's like, oh, it's, oh, no, because it's going to be complicated. Okay, let's switch sides. There you go, a bit of an anatomy challenge for myself. You've got a group of muscles called sits, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major, teres minor, and subscapularis. There you go. Oh, still remember stuff, let alone your latch, your traps, all of that stuff too. Um, right, okay, so shoulder stuff. Now we're gonna explore hip stuff. Feet wide, don't worry about style. All I want you to do is a wiggle jiggle and stick your tush out and then come back up. So it's more about hips and inner thigh, your abductors. So wiggle jiggle side to side. Oh, lovely. Now, if you start to bend those elbows and drop your head, you'll feel also a nice little stretch in your lats and armpits. So the muscles that are in your lower to mid back. Okay, and now we start to bend the knees and straighten at the knees. I gaze downwards with a straight leg. I gaze forward with a bent knee. So down and up, here you go. Now what might also happen here is you might start to feel a little breathless and that's good. And the reason you are being um, a little breathless is that you are using bigger muscle groups, <coughs> which require more oxygen because you're now working aerobically. Well done. Okay, rise up, pump your heels. So I, you know, this is the law as far as we're concerned. A heel pump on a standing body is just the beautiful thing. And the reason we do this is to stop blood pooling in your lower limbs and therefore you don't feel dizzy when you transition from one position or plane of movement to another. So we were here. And then when you come up, some of you could, may feel dizzy. So the heel pump is all part of that process. It's not just for old people, it's for everyone. Right, okay, so the next thing is wiggle jiggling, finding your way all the way down and asking your lower limbs to create a bit of movement here. So <clears throat> if you can't go all the way, go to your realm your range of movement. If you want to keep it moving, feel free. If you feel settling statically is a nice thing, then do that too. Find the thing that works for you. So I noticed that when I settle statically, I'm using my elbows to push my knees wide. And in that position, I'm starting to feel my hips open at the back and I'm starting to feel my back come into play. Too much, take a break from it, use your breath, calm your breath, stand, pump your heels. Lovely, good stuff. Okay, right, so balance is such a key part to um, the Pilates method. What I'd like us to do in the first place is to stand, let's assume the left leg is your lead leg. And when we stand on one leg only, we really lift up through the posture. So we're not sagging outwardly into the left hip. We're drawing ourselves in. We're using those core integral muscles to create the movement. From there, your right leg takes a step back. You shift your weight backwards and lower into the back leg. Rise up and come forward. Lift out of your right hip, nice and tall, brace through your center. Slowly take a step back, lean back into it, and then lower. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, you don't have to use the, ro the roller as your support, but take your time with the movement. 
squeeze through the buttocks on the up phase. So that means when you've bent and you've leant back, you're squeezing through your tush to bring yourself upright and then together. Got it? So take a step back, lower down, lean into it so you feel that middle, that middle element. Pull up. Okay, so there's a couple of things to record here. In that step back, you lean back. So we're bringing on that back leg and the back hip flexors. On the up phase, now Annie, do that again. What I don't want is a dive out of it. What I want is a slow, controlled lift. Take your time with it. Step back, lean back, lower down, squeeze butt, lift out of it. So this allows us to have a bit more power in the movement. I'm just checking timing. Good stuff. Now you probably will feel a little bit breathless with this. Um, it is going back to using big muscle groups. So when we're starting to work the quads like we are and the glutes and there's that power in the movement and we're moving strongly into a new position that will affect your breath pattern, okay? <laughs> Hamstring cramp. Right, good, 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 good. Okay, well done. Straight down onto the floor. So we're going to roll down. Have your roller nearby because we are going to, from a great position, spiraled thighs outwards, engage through the center, eye goes to belly button, roll down until you touch your roller. Roll out a little so your weight is shifted forward, you're on your tiptoes, roll back, rise up. Calm your breath, set your body, squeeze through your buttocks, open up your pelvis, breath in, roll down, roll out, shift your weight, come back, roll up. When you're doing the rolling, put all your effort and energy into your abdominal area. So really think about pulling it in to roll and then pulling it in to rise. So we're working the abs through the movement. Be conscious of the pelvic floor. Really feel that lift and connection in the pelvic floor, that lift and connection in your abdominals. Well done. Lovely jubbly, you little darlings. Last time, we roll down tip toes, bend knees, roll forward. Okay, and then we come into a bit of a rocking movement. So, when we're here, what I'd like us to do is to rock forward, shoulders over wrist, drop the hip, so you've got a lovely plank line or a, a modified plank, and then roll back, bottom towards heels. Roll forward and start to feel those core muscles engage. The next thing I want you to think about is the shoulders. We're not dropping the, um, the ribs and chest and we don't look like, in my head then, Jungle Book. You know the, the four, um, what are you gonna do? I don't know, what are you gonna do? What are they called? The vultures, right? So less shoulders, more core strength, long neck. Come back come forward, shoulders over wrists, stay there. Okay, so we've got long neck, shoulders down, curl toes under heels, one knee, possibly both, and hold it for four, three, two, knees down, sit back, come forward, set yourself up, hold, knees down, sit back, come forward when you're ready. Boom, boom. Hold. Let's work on maybe two or three more of these at your leisure. 
And when you've got to your last one, take some time out and grab a drink. I'm going to ask Patricia if she can open the door for me. Okie dokie, okie -o. Right. So when you've got a minute, let's have a little watch first. I'm just going to move some of my equipment because I have a tendency to impale myself. Okay. I was, um, a million years ago, I was filming for a, um, a big company and in my first tricep press up, I tore my, tri my tricep. And then because I was live and on camera, I just had to keep going. And it was the worst thing ever and it still gives me jip now. But it was the case of the show must go on. This is why it's so important to make sure we're nice and warm. But I want you to watch, okay? I'm gonna come down onto my belly not not all of us like this um and we're just going to settle here um with our chest lifted and our arms over the roller phase one because i want us to fami familiarize ourselves we're bringing the thighs together and squeezing the buttocks that's part one part two we bring the hands to the roller and we start to lift the elbows only so this will feel odd extremely odd start to squeeze the buttocks together and part three is a little press up through um, the body so use your hands to push down lift up and hold squeeze the buttocks lower down and if you want to you can roll the roller away so the idea is find the thing that works for you I like to make it into a phase. So I roll the roller in towards my collarbone. My elbows start to flare. I feel the squeeze on my shoulder blades. And then I start to push upwards. Lowering down, and push away, push up. So this is part of the Swan Dive series. The focus for you is working on inner thighs and gluteal squeeze. This enables what we call, um, this enables the back to extend. So we need you to feel this from the top of your pants into the small of your back, up into about your bra line. So squeeze the buttocks. Now some of you are natural back benders, the rest of us aren't. So this is, this is genetics. So some of you will find this quite simple, others will find this quite a challenge. In addition, whilst you're doing this, what's happening is you're stretching out that front fascia of the body, um, which helps us with the balance of the body. Well done, last time. Well done. Okay, so rest for a second. I'm going to just move down because I don't think I'm going to fit in. Okay, right. What I'm looking for is to lift the roller and pull it in towards my head, if not to the back of my head. And then a lift up. So it took a couple of preps. Now watch me. I'm lifting the roller and all I'm doing is trying to get it to the back of my neck. And then from there... The outward phase is an up butt squeeze, back to head, up butt squeeze. Now there's so much going on with your upper body, you might forget what's going on with your feet. So if you want to take your feet wider at first, great. If you prefer to have your feet together, where you really get some gluteal tension there, great too. So it's hard, it's hard to get it over your head. I know, I know. <laughs> There's all sorts of shenanigans going on. Okay, let's give this a bit of time. If you want to try it with the bar, see how that feels instead. You might feel that you've got a little bit more um, uh, capability. This is why I miss classes, because I'd like can that and go, right, that's it. And doing it on your belly is quite the challenge. 
So up and kneeling, modification, perfect. Lovely. Well done. What's that called? Widow's hump. Is that what it's called? Dowager's hump. Dowager's hump. That, that bit, that's the bit we're challenging here. So that's why it's important to, to really work on chess. So we started the session working on chess with the bar. Similar thing, we're just taking it to the next stage. Lovely. And you know what, Mary, that's excellent. Good, good. Annie, lovely. All of you, really good, because you it's lovely. What you can't see is the range going on here. Everyone's having, um, has, has chosen something that works really well for themselves. That's good. Well done. Release, relax. Now, we're not quite done there. Bring your toes together. Send your knees nice and wide. Use the roller to stretch out through the lat. So this means normally we just do a quick stretch we're actually going to stay here for probably a minute to two minutes in total so during that time all of it is about keeping the shoulders overhead if you want to you can look underneath your armpits side to side if you want to you slide your hands closer together or further away any way whatever way we just hold the hands overhead if you just feel that the need just to rest your forehead on the floor also fine but we're keeping the hands overhead acting a little bit dynamically feel the stretch out your back think about bottoms on your heels um, it's quite powerful so what we know is that if you do hold this for over a minute what suddenly happens is the muscle fibers which are holding on because they're like, I'm going to snap, I don't like it. In a minute, we'll go, oh, and melt. And that's really important. <sighs> well done. Flipping love you lot. So you should be feeling a bit magical now with your shoulders. Yeah, feel good? Okay, I want us to go back to basics with um, four point kneeling. Actually, if I move them out of the way. Okay, just watch for a second while you're having a little sip. Okay, now I struggle, I've noticed my, my body is definitely at kilter at the moment. Um, what I want is to focus on shoulders over wrists, then one leg will lift so the heel is in line with the shoulder height now on camera i'm hoping you can, you can see me okay I'll, I'll duck my head i'm just trying to have a little look at my form so you can see what what i'm trying for us not to do what i don't want is the leg to go out into the diagonal what i do want is that inner thigh to create the work so as the leg stretches back i want you to squeeze the inner thigh muscle into the into your bum crack girls that's what I want you to do. So your weight though is really over your shoulders. That, that bit's important. So this helps us to really get that good core engagement. And when you send the leg out, because I got a bit of chunk on my thighs, my, and because of my posture, I have a tendency to take my leg out to a diagonal a little bit, which actually turns off the function of the gluteals. So I need us to keep all that weight controlled over the front, stretch out, and it's the inner thigh that's doing the work. So it might be at the top of the movement when your leg is fully straightened that you just pull it inwards a little bit. And what you should feel is a bit more inner thigh um, connection, but also you might feel the arch of your foot pulling in as well. Would you agree? Good, okay, sit back, roll wrists. Because we're coming into a fairly strong wrist bit. 
um, wrist elbow shoulder bit so let's repeat on the other side so think about your weight shift forward I think we've just got a bit I've got sloppy with my teaching so I want us to make sure the shoulders are over <laughs> over wrists that's the important thing because you can feel when your shoulders are further back <coughs> excuse me when your shoulders are further back less of a core connection bring your shoulders over wrists you should feel above your ribs and just below your ribs really connecting in think about extending that leg squeeze in through the um, inner thigh and even at the top of the movement you're just pulling in slightly as if you're trying to get across the body you're not and your weight is equally distributed between right and left hand so just keep doing those quick checks flat hands fingers forward energy through the index fingers feel the same energy and weight through your elbows and your shoulders equal and balanced right and left send out one leg squeeze the inner thigh check it at the top of the movement so pull the inner thigh inwards create a bit more tension there so you feel more tension into the pelvic floor lovely i think you've got two or three more roughly It's hard, it's really hard onto the elbows um, and the wrists. Well done, release, relax. Okay, so, um, okay. Let's do this one on the elbows. So um, this is, a. if you just watch for a second, I'm gonna bring us into a four point kneeling, but your weight again is over your elbows. We are going to do two things. Take your right arm, make a fist, and then we're going to rotate. So your left shoulder is nice and stable. Your right arm is now straight. Then we're going to lift out the right leg and we're going to push the left heel, right heel, right heel, down the middle of your yoga mat and then back to a cocked leg position. Push back, toe of moving leg points towards ceiling. So I just changed my position, so elbow, fist. Straighten it off my right arm, cock in right leg, push back toes towards the ceiling, come back to that lovely 99, 90 degree angle. Push back, so it's almost like a donkey kick. Push back. Now, this is quite hard, all right? So the piriformis, your butt muscles are gonna cry. Yes, the whole of the hip action, butt action is like, oof. See if, when your knee comes in, get your knee higher. Because it's tired, so your knee is going lower and lower. So lift that knee as your starting position and then really open up the leg as you extend away. Lush us, anyone dying? Okay, extend away and hold. Tiny, weeny, little presses. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, we're not done. Bring the leg forward out into 90 degrees and we pulse. 10, nine, eight, seven, six. You're welcome. And release. Like, what's wrong with her? Why is she so upset and angry with us? What have we done to deserve this today? I'm so very sorry. <laughs> okay, so just for the joy of it, let's just sit on our right hip just for a second and see if we can just get a bit of a stretch. <sighs> Lean towards your left side if you can without a bit of crampage. Good luck, ladies. <sighs> Okay, right, other side. So the setup is the funny bit, isn't it? So we think about coming down onto our forearms, is the left fist into the ground, straight and left elbow, so your left shoulder is higher than your right shoulder, then we cock the leg. There's no other way to describe it other than a leg cocking. Well, it's leg, it's hip abduction, okay. 
And then you send the leg backwards, but press through the heel, toe towards the ceiling. On the pullback, the knee wants to come down and in because it's tired and it doesn't like it. So we have to really start with that really strong position. Push back, pull in, push back, pull in. Really power out of your shoulders here, lovelies. Now, as always, adapt. Work to the point of pain, not through pain. Whew, it's making me hot this morning. Ah, well done. Heel if you can. Heel if you can, rather than pointy toes. If you go through the heel, oh yeah, it's powerful. If you go through the heel, we've got more of an inner thigh connection and more into the glute and, and piriformis. Guess who's been practicing this at home? <sighs> well, well done, up and hold. Okay, and then lift, lift, toe to ceiling, flex foot. Seven, six, five, four, three, we're not done. We bring the hip forward, so we're out to the side, fully extended and lift for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, ow, 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 and release. <sighs> Are we okay? Oh, total thumbs down. Thumbs up, thumbs down. There's some fanning going on. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a bit of a sneaky one. I'm really sorry. <laughs> am I, am I seriously sorry? No, I'm not sorry at all. Right, okay, right. Let's lie down. Let's give you a bit of relaxation for a second, just for one second. All I'm asking is, <coughs> knees to chest, give yourself a hug. <sighs> Roll those knees. If you want to, you can also hold on to the back of the knee and do some rolls, point toes, flex feet, see how you feel. Okay, right. <sighs> So I'm actually in a ditch with socks, um, so I, cause I can hold on to my feet. Okay, so let's have a look at happy baby for a second. What I'm looking for is inside arch. If you don't wanna do that, outside arch, one leg only. So think about how that feels. So some of you might have to lift the chest to hold on to the foot, and it might be your foot's quite low. So just give yourself a moment to find something that works for you. This is about hamstring and inner thigh connection. If you want to, pull it down. So use your arm to pull that knee into the outside of your ribs. Well done. Okay, switch sides. It's the same thing. Hold on to the inside arch or the outside. I don't, I don't care. What I care about is what's going on at the buttock and where the back of the thigh joins the buttock. Yes? You are right there, Pat? She's lovely. Now I like to actively pull, so use my hands to pull my knee towards my ribs. Now it can feel a little uncomfortable, but it really does help. And the reason we're going alternatively is because now we're going to bring both feet up into the air. Now if you want to, you can um, hold on to your big toes. So I use two fingers, so um, index middle finger to grab onto my big toes to help me in happy baby stretch. Now while we're here, let's have a little rock side to side. If it's all too much, hold on to the back of the knees. It really is about you and feeling comfortable. And if you want to, you can give yourself a lovely stretch and straighten off those knees. Another way to do this is to flex your feet, rotate so your toes really point down towards the ceiling and then work on holding on to your thighs or calves to get that deeper stretch into the groin. Well done. And the reason we're doing this 
is because we're going to bring our feet down onto the floor, we're going to draw our heels towards our bottoms and we're going to look to rise up into a bridge. So for the first two or three, I don't mind where your feet are. I just want you to only focus on rolling up the spine to the top of the movement and then rolling down the spine. Okay, so rolling up the spine. <coughs> the next time you do this, let's bring our feet into neutral, heels in towards the bottom, toes forward, tip the pelvis, so we've got that posterior tilt, then rise up and stop, tuck in the ribs at the bottom. So ribs at, not your bottom, at the bottom of the ribs, tuck under. Now squeeze the thighs and open up through the pelvis. So your butt muscles will push the hips up a little higher and it will feel like your knees are trying to separate, but they're not. Okay, now we're going to hold it there. Now we pulse. We've got 20 of these pulses, but you have to be high already in the position. And then tiny weenie, clench the butt cheeks like you're trying to crack a walnut there, lovelies. So nice and tight into your butt cheeks, push and really send your hips high. So don't rush it, but get me 20 and really push high. What should happen is your hamstrings, so the back of thighs are going, oh, hello, mama. And then your butt cheeks are going, hi, honey. And it's all nice and tight and your back muscles are going, oh, we're strengthening. This is really good, amazing stuff for your spine and your buttocks and your hips and your hamstrings. It's just a no brainer. Higher. There you go. Push a little higher. Good work. I hope that you're counting this through. Oh. There you go. Baby's into attack. The dogs are back in play in Pilates. <laughs> Once you've done that, kitchen. We're bringing the roller back into play. So I want us to think about opening up through the spine again. Ooh. Right. So, I'm, I'm both weapons are in play. So in the first place, I'm up on the roller and I'm taking the roller um, underneath my hip and pelvis and bringing my inner thighs. In fact, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to cross over my ankles. Okay, so that in itself is fun. Then with the pole in my hands holding onto the ends, I'm just leaving my hands um, hold the pole overhead. <sighs> Squeeze your shoulder blades together and see if you can elongate. And I want you really to think about the stretch here. And it might mean that your shoulder blades are coming off the deck. Stretch, stretch. Undo, redo, other side. Give yourself a moment to get in there. And then once you're in there, start to squeeze your inner thighs together and stretch, stretch, stretch. Well done. Okay, draw the heels into bottom for a second and just, <laughs> and just relax. Now she's taking a photograph of me relaxing. <laughs> okay, well done. Keep your hips on the roller. I want you to hold on to, um, so cup your hands around the roller and draw your knees into chest, okay? What we're looking here is sending the legs vertically and just work on flex extension, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. So flat feet, pointed toes, flat feet, pointed toes. Keep those heels together, okay? The next thing is just adjust your level. So you need to be vertical. Push your hips are on the roller. There is a tendency to bring your feet closer to your face, if that makes sense. I need you to have them vertical. Then I need you to flex the feet. Then I want you to turn your toes out so you've got like mermaid's feet. You can't see that on camera. Okay, so you're turning your toes out. Okay, right. Toes out, heels connect. That on its own is a nightmare. So we're gonna send the legs forward away from you, bracing through our abdominals, and then you're gonna pull them up swiftly. Got it? So we take it down 
and pull up swiftly. Take it down and pull up swiftly. Lovely, lovely. Take it down and lift. Take it down and lift. Good job. Give me four more. And three, think about bracing. Two. Oh, last time. Draw knees into chest and give yourself a minute. That was quite strong, right? Keeping those inner thighs connected like that, slightly externally rotated, quite a challenge. Okay, so we're staying here for one more. <coughs> okay, one leg pops out towards the skirting board, the other knee into chest. Mm. Oh, I lied, two more. <sighs> Breath in, exhale, switch. Now what I'm doing here is pulling my knee into chest, but also pressing my thigh away. So I've got one hand on the top of my thigh, just pushing it downwards and pulling in other knee into chest and switching. Good job. Okay, take hands out of play, hands up towards the ceiling. Right leg extends, right arm extends. Okay, is that right? And then we switch. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Oof. Okay, so left arm extends, left leg extends. And switch. And switch. I always find this quite pleasure. It, it creates pleasure because you get that lovely stretch in your abdominals, but equally you're getting a bit of pressure in your back as well, so it's a, it's a nice thing, it's a nice thing. Okay, now from here we're gonna add on, you know where we're going with this, we are coming into Toy Soldier, so we're looking for leg, leg, <laughs> don't film me Pat, circle, <laughs> arm, arm, circle, you can film that bit, one, two, three, <laughs> One, two, on oh, sorry, Siri. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, that feels nice. One, two, three. Oh, I've got it now. I'm in a nice little rhythm. One, two, one, two, three. Last time, anyone feeling that in the inner thighs? Drawing the knees into chest, popping the feet on the floor, lifting hips, dismounting gracefully. Ah, okay. Now, um, as we start to power down, what I'd like us to do is do um, a lovely quad stretch. Um, just because we have, um, I just need you to turn off everywhere else for a minute. Great quad stretch. And um, just to remind you, if you are lifting heavy weights or you do get delayed onset muscle soreness, any kind of soreness in your thighs, we have to look after thighs mostly because we need the thighs to get us on and off of beds, chairs forever. So when we come into a rolling position, you start as far back along your mat as possible. You start um, at the top of the thighs on the roller, pull as if you're stuck in mud, stretch out your arms, pull yourself in a straight line to the top of your kneecap, push back. Now. When you go quickly, it hurts less, slower. We're getting deeper into um, beyond the fashion. We're really starting to get some movement into um, the, the makeup of the four muscles in the front of the thigh. Okay, now, breathe. And I'm really sorry if you are whimpering. You know I love you. Okay, the change from there is Toes in, heels out. 
Okay. Play with this team. It might mean that you just load onto one side. So not one size ever fits all. All of these movements are guide movements. So we know that this should get most of your muscles. Some of you, because of your own DNA, um, will prefer some moves over others, but still really important. And also from a, neu um, a neurological point of view, this roller, this the f when you roll, the fascia is talking to the muscles, it's talking to the capillaries, it's creating oxygen, it's creating blood flow into those areas. So it is a bit of a win-win. Okay, now finally, legs wide, heels in, toes out. Ooh. Now, because we've done a fair bit of inner thigh work today, you might feel a bit tender coming up from the knee into the groin. Um, remember to breathe. That bit's really important because we're like, ah, 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 ah. so we don't want you to do that. We need to get some proper belly breaths into it. And remember, if you're if you haven't rolled for a while like this on this muscle group, it will be tender. Um, it is like sports massage, but it's a really good thing because it does just push away um, um, a buildup of lactic acid, any toxins, so it's a good thing. And when you're ready, we dismount. Okay, to finish strong, ditch the roller. Let's have a look at downward facing dog. We'll stay there for a while, um, statically, and then we will move dynamically. So push back into down dog to start with. Think about your alignment. Equal weight into your hands and fingers. Push your bottom backwards and see if you can just push your head and chest further towards your thighs and mat. So we're looking for a lovely straight back. You might need to adjust as you settle into this movement, relax your kneecaps. By relaxing off your kneecaps, there's a good chance we'll get more of a stretch through the back and lats and through the hamstrings. If you want to bring your feet closer together, great. If you feel the need to separate feet or turn toes out, heels in, feel free. How does that feel? We play. Now we bend one knee slowly and then the other, switch in. Bend one knee slowly. <coughs> and see if we can add in a rotation into the movement. So now we're not only bending one knee, we're looking through armpits and just really getting that full stretch out of the extensor chain. done Ooh. and when you're ready pop those knees down settle back in child's pose so find the variation that works for you we're now starting to tap into the parasympathetic nervous system so we're thinking about breath we're calming the breath <clears throat> and when you are ready, dismount. We're going to do some relaxation. Okay, if you want to put on something warm so you don't chill too quickly. And find a position that's appropriate for some breath work. <laughs> Okay, ah, switching cameras, I think, as well. There you go. Oh, I look like a little gnome. <laughs> okay, let's firstly think breath.
calm in the breath is really important. Slow in the breath. Calm in the breath. Today what I'd like you to do is relax the face. I want you to feel your hairline and see if you can take any tension away from your hairline. Relax around your ears. And this, this is important because this is all tapping into stress management, okay? Relax the jaw. Some of you will allow your tongue to rest on the roof of your mouth. Separate your teeth if you can and lips if you can. Just find a way. It might be that you need to wiggle jiggle your jaw to just be even conscious that you're holding any tension in the jaw. In the jaw. So our central nervous system, in the old days our nanas used to say, she's on her nerves. Um, and she, oh, she's on her nerves. This is about switching into the system that enables you to have better absorption of nutrients in your body, allow for better rest in your body. And when we rest, we optimize healing, not only at a cellular level when we talk about muscles and bones and organs, but we're also talking skin and the neurological conversation that's going on in your body. So the instructions from your nervous system to do things. So relaxing the face is really important part of this. Then I want you to think about relaxing off your neck and tension around the skull. And notice if you are holding any tension. What about the eyebrows? Is there any tension around the eyebrows or around the temples? Is there any tension in your cheekbones and around the sinus area? Now you might need to palpate, use your hands or fingers or thumbs and just give yourself a little bit of pressure around these areas as well if you feel the need. Allow for tension to wash downwards, neck sh and onto shoulders. Like there's a draw, like, um, like somebody's touched the crown of your head and brush down and off your shoulders. So it's come down and off your shoulders. Just send in and wash in any tension away. It's a lovely little technique. It's also about tricking the body sometimes to let go. So push your hands out and let go. So feel that tension starting to lower from the head downwards. Feel the shoulders starting to relax and let go. Feel any muscular tension around the shoulder girdle, around the top of the shoulder into the biceps, your elbow joints. Just feel that releasing and letting go. Now you may need to apply a bit of movement into this if that helps you or visualize. But just feel like you're washing as you're slowing your breath and you're pushing that breath down through your body. You're cascading downwards and we're pushing energy downwards and outwards. We're sending it away with each breath, any tension. And the body doesn't know where that tension comes from. Whether it's um, to do with you, um, relationships, to do with um, your health. Your body doesn't know. It just needs to release. It's like kicking that bucket full of water. By using slow, calming breath and taking any tension out of muscle areas, we start to just take away some of that water from that stress bucket. We also tend to um, um, hold a lot of tension in the pelvic floor so I want you now to think about holding on. So where there's wind, where there's water, we have tension. I just want you to relax that off a little bit so we don't end up having high tone 
in the abdominal cavity, into the pelvic cavity. We don't want that to hold it there. We'd need to relax too. So think around the perineum, just, just relax off, feel tension, relax. Relax into the inner thigh, relax down through the knees and thighs. And continue to calm the breath. Continue to allow this tension to slowly just drift away. The tide is going out. The stress is leaving the body. And when you feel those last droplets of muscle tension or energy, whatever it is you like to call it, leaving your body, we just hold ourselves in this space, this stillness. And this is that place where we rebuild, where we use affirmation to rebuild that you are strong, not in the future, this is now. You are strong. That today you will be the best version of you. No matter what. You will always strive for better. that your beauty radiates from within and people see your kindness. They feel your empathy and they know your love. And all that stuff you give to others, you need to apply to yourself as well. That you are loved And that, innate, that empathy that you have enables you to love yourself more. And that to me, you are incredible women. And you deserve the very best in life. Now the tide's coming in. But as the tide's coming in, it's bringing a new energy. 